Okay, I'm literally jumping back into this again, even though I probably shouldn't be, because I've been recording this game, like, all day, basically. So, let's just go ahead and get back into it. Uh... Uh, I want to let's boost the lock up actually this time Yeah, he realized telling me to stay away was a bad thing I'm not even gonna read all this specifically. When you finally reach his place, he's waiting for you always. Uh, much less menacingly. He signals you to park and come inside. There's a storm going on and I'm still driving around in all this? Like, what the heck? As you enter, you hear him bark from the kitchen. Uh, j just, just out of sight. Shoes off. Okay. The the order the the order uh hangs in the hall in the air for a moment. Please remove your shoes. Sit. We will speak. Okay. You do as he instructs, sitting opposite to him. Waiting for him to make the first move in the conversation. Thank you for coming to speak with me. It must not have been easy making the journey. Oh yes, the storm. We are familiar, it and I. But I speak of something else entirely. I suspect you know. First, I must apologize. When we last spoke, I suspected you were a bad person. I mistook your actions with my daughter for taking advantage of her. I believe now that I was wrong. I'm still not very sure what exactly you're up to, but I spoke with Eli and with Detective Zweihanda. Whoever you are, whatever you're doing, I'm now convinced you are only trying to protect Iro. I am sorry. I was foolish and only succeeded in hurting Iro. You are very patient and understanding. I would not have been so quick to forgive. It is humbling. Right now, Iro is not answering my calls. She is not answering calls from Eli or Kari or other friends. She is hiding from the world and she is hurting. I, how did I get so invested into this? And right now, this behavior is more concerning than ever. What has Iro told you about her mother? Yes, I see. That alone shows me that she must trust you deeply. Iro's mother passed away when Iro was very young. And the circumstances were very tragic. Iro was there when it happened. No, I cannot speak of these things. You do not need to know this to help Iro. Hmm. Yes, I will tell you everything. My wife, her name was Rain. She drowned when Iro was only six years old. Always, Rain loved surfing. 
She was world class, professional. On the day she died, she and Hiro had gone to the beach to surf the monster waves. Every year, the storm comes, and every year it brings waves. Every year, the waves call to rain. I was home. Eli was only three. I hate surfing, but rain would take you. Tell her to watch mommy. Show her how to surf the monster waves. Always, Iro would surf with her mom. But during the storm, never. Family friend come to watch Iro while her mom is surfing. But friend becomes distracted. Stops watching her for a moment. And... Well... Rain drowned, saving Iro from the waves. Oh. And Iro blames me. Hiro has different idea what happened the day her mother drowned. During this time, I was not police chief. I was detective, working with Subrosa PD's drug task force. I was much younger then, very handsome. That is how I married Hiro's mom. My partner and I had successfully busted major drug ring, bringing down many powerful criminals. As a result, my partner and I received many threats. We are going to kill your family. We are going to take your children. Your family will pay for what you did. Many, many threats. But they did not stay threats. One year after our major bust, my partner went missing, just gone, like that, never heard from him again, case is cold, me, I was very scared for my family, I told Rain we should move, but she was fearless, she did not want to live anywhere but Subrosa, one day, we are arguing about it, I tell Rain how guilty I feel that I put her and the kids in danger, only, Hiro overhears this, and now she thinks her daddy is bad, that he makes it dangerous for his family. No, that is not what happened, but it is true in Hiro's mind. I am called by search and rescue. I leave Eli with neighbor. I rush to beach as fast as I can drive. When I get there, they have pulled little Iro from the water. She is okay. Also, they have pulled my rain. She is not okay. Iro is screaming and crying. When I run to her, she is so mad at me. She tells me it is my fault. She is hysterical. When everything is over, Hiro did not speak any words for two months. Many therapists work with her. They say she is traumatized. She is heartbroken. And she never forgives me. But I think it is because the truth is too haunting for her to look at. Only as much as a little girl can be at fault. She only ran into the ocean, where her mom was. But I think Iro will blame herself if she tries to make peace with it. Now, every year on the anniversary of her mother's passing, Iro gets more and more reckless. She tries more racing her motorcycle, jumping off tall places, dangerous stunts, fighting. And this year, I think she will go surfing. Oh no. When the monster waves. She come. did bring it up to me. But Irai tells me that when you showed up, Iro stopped so much these dangerous things. That she talks more love and happiness. And that she would not go surfing after all. And I have ruined it. So, no matter what you think of me, 
Will you please go to Iro? Will you check on her? Will you try to undo my mistake? Thank you. Thank you so very much. Eli said he dropped by Iro's beach house, but no one was home. I will still check there first. When Iro is sad, she does not stray far from her garage and her crossfit. If she is there, maybe she will show herself to you. Good luck. My Iro was very lucky to have met you. I trust you will. Be safe. Oh my goodness. Drive to Eero's beach house is somewhat less treacherous and... Oh my goodness, okay. Even so, it takes twice to... Several minutes of knocking, you call her name, you start to look around the rest of the property. You quickly find Eero in her garage, sitting on the, on the floor. Sally leaning against her bike. Hey. I'm not home right now. Sure, but she never checks those either. But go ahead, after the beep. I got your text messages. The one you sent on the night of our date. When you said you weren't feeling well. To me, it looked a lot more like you were saying, Eero, I don't want to be with you. Then I talked to Eli, who told me a bunch of things. And then I had an enormous fight with my father. So, let's start there. Were you not feeling well? Or were you doing as my father told you? I'm breaking up with me. I trust you were in an impossible decision. But lying is never the best first step. There's a lot of stuff I haven't told you, and I suspect there's stuff you're not telling me. That's okay. People have their secrets that they need to keep hush-hush. But I've never lied to you. I lied to myself about how I felt about you. But once I realized what those feelings were, I told you. I feel I deserve the same. Straight up. I needed better from you. But that's easier said than done, I suppose. Okay, I think I've got the whole picture. We can go our separate ways now. Don't worry about me. I'll get over this. I always do. Yeah. You're right. You're probably the most observant person I've ever met. Since I dragged you in, I'll tell you. When I was a lot younger, I used to spend a lot of time with my mom. She taught me how to surf, how to skate, how to do everything that I love. Back then, my father was... a very serious man. He didn't show much affection to his family. He was very, very harsh with his sons. Especially Eli. He was always very busy with work. A policeman. Going after very dangerous criminals. One time, he solved a case that brought many, many people to justice. Powerful, wealthy people. People with ties to the community. People with ties to the government. He was hailed as a hero. But the consequences of his work were that his family, us, always felt we were in danger. We got letters and messages that said they were going to kill us. Strangers on the street would tell my mom that she was going to be killed. That I was going to be taken away. 
It got so bad that the police asked my father to go into protective custody. But my mom refused. She was very attached to this town. To the ocean and the forest here. She didn't want to be chased away. And she was the only one that made us feel safe. She was my hero. Oh wow, she was wicked cool. Take my guns and Eli's charm, and that was my mom. I didn't realize it at the time, but the fear did have an effect on my mom. She became more bold with her thrill-seeking. She started drinking more. And I didn't realize it back then, but she was becoming depressed, which finally resulted in her taking the ultimate risk. Something she had wanted to do since she was young, but knew was too dangerous. I think I told you about this tropical storm going on. It hits Sabrosa every year. And every year, it brings these incredible waves. Huge monster waves. The kind professional surfers dream about. And when the conditions are right, you can indeed surf them. But there are conditions where you shouldn't. When the danger is too high. And my mom decided to surf in those conditions. I don't know. And I don't know if I could ever know. Wait a sec, how far is, is my latest save? I knew she was sad. But she covered it with this wild spirit. It's hard to say what she was thinking. My mom brought me and a friend along when she went surfing that day. She wanted me to see that fear couldn't stop her from doing what she loved. And she went out in the water just as the other storm surfers were coming in. Just as things were becoming much too dangerous. This is where it's hard to remember. Things happened so fast. I remember being worried for my mom. I could tell she was afraid. She had this look in her eyes. The same look she got when people told her she was going to be killed. When they told her I was going to be taken. She went out anyway. And I remember cheering for her. But... But at some point... I lost track of her. The waves were so large, and the water was so choppy. And I was worried she needed help. I remember I got so afraid that I started calling for my dad. It got to be too much to handle. So when my babysitter was distracted, that's when I grabbed a surfboard and ran to go help her. Now, if they tried, I didn't notice them. And that's where my memory gets... wonky. I remember my mom and I on a surfboard, but the surfboard getting ripped away by a wave. I remember holding on to a life ring by myself. The weird rubber feeling on my arms, and the rope line hurting my fingers. I remember my mom's hand and her voice. I remember my dad coming when it was too late. And that's all I can remember. I was so mad at my father for making mom so scared that she disappeared into the ocean. For failing to save her. For not crying at her funeral. And I've never forgiven him. Yeah, every year the storm comes. Every year the waves come. And every year I'm still standing on the beach, watching the waves. Wanting so bad to see her out there. Wanting to go out and join her. Every year. For a long time, I just couldn't handle it. I kept going to the beach and looking for mom. I had tons of night terrors. I didn't eat well. Funny enough, one of the things that finally snapped me out of it was Eli. I remember, we used to play dress up. He would always be the princess. But one day, he dressed up as a mom and started taking care of me. He brushed my hair and told me I was smart and powerful. And I remember it made me feel a lot better for a very long time. It was like Eli was the only family I had. 
My father became even more distant after my mom died, and he didn't know how to raise a little girl. Or a little Eli. So, we became distant too. Eli was my mom, and my brother, and my sister, and my friend. I'm not sure I would have made it without him. Yeah, he told me. I heard he was also interested in you. But called it off when my feelings for you were more for sure. I have no idea how he got so charming and helpful and nosy. He takes after my mom for sure. As for my dad, I doubt he's even aware what's going on with me. After he admitted what he did to you, with the traffic stop, I screamed and yelled at him and haven't spoken to him since. I can't believe he did that. I'm so tired of fighting with him. I'm so tired of him not actually caring about me. What did you say? I can't believe you would. Don't you know it's some kind of trick? My father never shows compassion. He never shows us that he cares. How could you possibly know he was worried about me? I'm gonna save real quick. I don't know which one of these is a better option. My father apologized to you. I... I think I need to process this. My father has never asked someone for help like that. He's never spoken about my mom to anyone. If what you're saying is true... I... I need to clear my head. Why would I do that? That is so... that's not that that's even an option. All right. I just... I need some air. I hope she's okay. All right, I'm gonna leave this here though. I'm gonna pick this up in the next uh, video. Uh, it might be a longer one, I don't know. Uh, this one was gonna be longer, but I decided to cut it a little short. But I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.